Welcome, everyone, to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a weekly show that tells you what is going on in the nerdy world. I am CJ Mellon, joined this week by Joshua Burns. What up? The Bernstons are, are, are separated right now. Well, Brian had to go on a vision quest. That, that's very true. I heard that he will come back as a lizard man. <laughs> so I, I want to open up the show talking about the, the world of movies. It's a segment that we like to call Screen to Screen. Netflix this week dropped a, a couple of big things, one of them being Black Mirror, which I haven't got to watch yet. So I, I, I'm going to watch that. I'm going to binge that, then then curl into a small ball, go in the fetal position and cry for several days. Wait, what's Black Mirror? Black Mirror is a uh, used to be a BBC show or it used to be an English show. Came over to Netflix, and it, it is kind of like the Twilight Zone about technology. So, like, oh, yeah, we've talked. It's about amazing. That. Okay. You should totally check it out. The fourth season's coming. They have a Star Trek uh, parody episode that, it, ev- listen, everything goes wrong all the time. Like, there's, there's, I'm not no sure happy I endings. could wait. Hold on. Here's my, here's my initial and maybe final reaction. Oh, I don't know. I watch a sci-fi show where everything goes wrong all the time. Yeah, but it's th- called Doctor Who. Like, I don't need <laughs> no, another one. But no, but at the end, things are right. And it, there was one episode where everybody lived in Black Mirror. Nothing goes right ever, and everything. Oh, was wrong. I'm not. I don't think I'm interested. It's in that. so like, good. that seems very, oh, very heavy. So it is. It's very heavy. So uh, good. It's so good. I reserve all the heavy stuff for like movies, and it's I'm, so good. And they usually only do like four episodes a season, so it's it's very. You'll, Are they ninety minutes long, yeah, like Sherlock? A, a little. Oh, bit, ooh, without humor. There's some humor, but it's dark. It's, it's, like it's pretty fucking seems, dark. Seems like it seems like curling up into a ball like, and crying so is what would happen. That's I'm, I'm what you do, but it feels good. It's a cathartic cry. I don't think it's cathartic anyway. at all. It sounds depressing. So we will talk about Black Mirror uh, later, and I'm sure Brian's going to watch it. So I, I'll, I'll wait for for him to be there for it. But Josh, I, why he's going to put it on his list? He's got. I think this is the one that he will actually watch. I'm not sure. He's on a plane. Just download that shit before you get on. Three seasons behind on Doctor Who. He's going to watch this. He's not going to catch up to Doctor Who. Ugh. What I really what I really want to talk about, though, <laughs> is Bright. Uh, it, we, we talked about this movie a couple months ago, saying Will Smith lead in a movie. You brought up when was the last time Will Smith led a movie that you actually liked, to which we all said, hey, that's, oh, God, that's accurate. Uh, and he's not Was that me or Brian? I thought it was you. I, I don't know. It could have been either one of us. And and I, I, I will stand behind that. Now, the thing with Bright is it got torn apart by critics. At the time of this recording, it has a 29 on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, again, that's just the critic score. Uh, so there's, there's still more to, to be had. But the fans like it. It has an 88 with fans. So it's one of those movies that's that's divisive. The thing for me that when I will totally watch this, though, like the, I will watch this because Max Landis wrote it. And I like Max Landis as a writer. So I'll give this movie a, a, a chance. Uh, plus the the guy who actually plays the the orc, Joel, uh, what is it, El Egerton? Edgerton. 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 Joel Edgerton. Well, I don't understand how you don't know Joel Edgerton. Like I don't know how to say his you've name. You've seen a bunch of yes, movies. It's he's in, it's he's spelled in a lot of phonetically. I, it's spelled phonetically. I, I, Edgerton. The, the letters and the flipping. It's no good. But like you've seen him in a bunch of stuff. I have. Doesn't necessarily mean okay. I can say like the the guy from the A team in District Nine. I can't say his name at all. Charlton Copley. Yeah, I can't say that. That right there. It's spelled phonetically. I can't say it. You're assuming I can <laughs> spell is, and read. This is that's disappointing. Anyway, so I didn't get to watch it, but I think you did. So I'd like yeah, I to did, hear a little uh, some some impressions about the movie. Well, I, first. Um, in every conversation we've had about this, I've been not at all, not like not at all enthused. And then you were texting about it the other day and I, you know, I watched a trailer again. It looks awful. You said Max Landis wrote it and I went, no, oh, damn it. Well, if Max Landis wrote it, I have to watch it. I'm, I have to give it a watch. Uh, the guy's brilliant. I, I don't think I've seen anything he's written that I didn't like. Um, so I died. So I, I queued it up last night and, uh, the 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 first i don't know 15 20 minutes like I, I it was just very slow to start it wasn't very interesting um and you start getting introduced i'll tell you what was interesting the opening credits uh did a really good job of sort of laying out the landscape of los angeles in this in this world um without really a ton of 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 text there wasn't a whole lot of reading right okay um but they're giving you the story of 
what's happening, right? Humans and orcs and, and elves. Um, and, and you, you get it. Like you, you see it you, before the movie even starts, you understand it. And sort of all of the, the all of the sort of powder keg, um, socio political things that are at play in LA right now, they're still, they're still at play in the movie, it's still there, right? right? Racially. Yeah. But then you add to it the, the, the additional layers of elves and orcs where, I mean, as you can imagine, elves sort of, uh, you know, pictured in the way you saw them, uh, in, in like Lord of the Rings, but like, you know, modern dress, right. um, and orcs sort of the way you've seen them pictured in, in popular media, um, sort of ugly and big and bulky and strong and, and sort of, uh, 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 working class. And they're really portrayed more as, you know, almost, almost to the degree of slave labor for, for centuries or whatever. Jeez. Um, but you, you quickly learn about all these factions and it becomes very interesting, like, like super interesting, very quickly. And, um, and as as the movie progresses, it becomes more and more and more appealing, uh, which I I haven't I haven't seen a ton of stuff like it. I, although um, in the same way that Chronicle sort of built and built and built and built, right. th- this did. So you you see Max Landis throughout um, laying on some ground, but the the best the best thing, at least my, my favorite thing about this is that. There was an absolute climax to this story that immediately the main character sort of denied. Like, like Will Smith was like, nope, everything's good. We're all good. Everything's fine. Right? Like, no, nothing happened. And it's a perfect setup. I don't care if they turn this into a movie franchise where they release a new bright movie annually. I, 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 gotta, I gotta be honest, though. I'd much rather see a 10-part series every year like i could use this story cj this 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 in this ecosystem is so broad that it could absolutely accommodate seven to ten episodes an hour long every year to 18 months and i'd be thrilled i mean i i'm very happy with it see the thing about this is i had mixed feelings about this movie uh david Ayer is the director and if you don't know who that is he directed suicide squad and end of watch yep uh, the the bu- both were great. The mo- <laughs> the movie had a ninety million dollar budget, and before it actually even dropped, was greenlit for a sequel on Netflix. So you're already getting a sequel. It, it was the first Netflix movie to be greenlit for a sequel. That's a big deal. Like I said, the critics didn't like it. Fans seem to to really enjoy it. I, I think it's definitely worth a watch. It's, it is on my list of, of things to to see. Uh, I, I went to the theater and saw some movies that I instantly regret right away. But uh, yeah. I, I, I'm very intrigued by this. The premise, I mean, Netflix is, is its own beast, right? They're not beholden to typical audiences and they're not looking for a huge return like a typical movie is. So the fact that credits tore this apart, you don't see that being a problem or, or like, do you think Max Landis is going to write Bright 2? Or are they going to make some changes because the, the critics were like, nah, not feeling it. I don't think Max Landis gives a damn what anybody says about That's it. That's very true. And I think that, by the way, if you if you look at the review trend, it's trending up. That's good. So it, there's, there's, a, there's a stark difference between you know, idiot asshole critics and everybody who actually cares and matters about watching movies. But before we, we, we move on and you sort of, you glossed over David Ayer and I, I want to, you really, you sort of, cause you said suicide squad and end of watch and that's great. And he did write those. And I liked both very much. He also wrote fury, right? The war movie with Brad Pitt. Yes. Uh, he wrote harsh times starring Christian Bale, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wrote, SWAT, the screenplay for the movie, which I I don't know anybody that doesn't like. SWAT. I enjoy him as a writer. I don't enjoy. Hold, him hold as on, a I'm not, I'm not, I'm not done. All right, Training Day and the original Fast and the Furious, both David Ayer. So like I'm and as a and as a director, like I don't I don't see. I mean he he directed Fury, Sabotage, End of Watch, Street Kings, Harsh Times. Like I've got no issue with this. I've guy. seen Fury. Uh, I love Fury. Fury was great. Did you see Street Kings? I did not. 
and I it's saw Keanu end Reeves of and Forrest Whitaker. It's excellent. I, saw, I watched End of Watch and I saw Suicide Squad. So the three things I've seen from him, I've only liked one. So, I mean, I'm not a huge – again, I love him as a writer, but I, I kind of like Max Landis a little better as a writer. Well, well sure, I, but I'm not I'm, – I'm saying – For this. This guy has directed a bunch of stuff that I've liked very much. And I'm okay with giving him redemption on directing. If if the movie is really good, I can forgive him for – in a watch and, you know, maybe – Well, you're going to have to go watch it over the next seven days and then – Come back and and you know after the, after the next seven days and tell us what you thought about Bright. You need to watch it. All right. So I want to move away from Bright then. I want to talk about some news that I, I've seen. I, I definitely have to to hear your opinion on this. There is a a rumor that the that NBC is going to be bringing back The Office for a revival uh, because of the success of things like uh, Will and Grace, uh, Roseanne. Uh, a couple other shows. This is the newest one to come back on the, hey, we're coming back for a season or two. Uh, and I, I'm just, I'm, I, I, man, that, that story got wrapped up so neatly. I have no idea why we would need this. Yeah. I mean, I just, just today saw that uh, Roseanne is coming back yeah. and I got very excited because I love that show. Um, however, The Office is a show that I've never watched again. Like I, I, I watched it. But like I took a couple years off there, and then I I, I watched the end, um, but I, I haven't watched it again. I probably never will. I, I, like I don't care. Not a big deal for you. You're you're not an office person. It was a it was a really great show, but I it's not like once I've seen The Office once, I don't need to watch it a second time. It's not like Scrubs or The West Wing or one of those. Please bring back both of those shows. Well, because back in January, Steve Carell put out a, a tweet that you know there was a revival maybe in in the works, uh, and then later he came out and said that his uh his uh, his account was hacked by Toby uh, Flenderson, uh, and then he may <laughs> have been joking, he may not have been joking, and then. A couple other people have also kind of thrown around, and um, the the other rumors that they they may not even bring Michael Scott back. Yeah, I could do without Michael Scott. Like he was my least favorite. Michael Scott's your least favorite. Yeah, he is like my least oh. favorite guy. Wow, because he's such a fucking idiot. Like I, <laughs> I can't usually, get behind anybody who's that dumb. Well, I don't know how you uh, I don't know how you deal with me then. You're not that dumb. All right, but uh, hold on. You you said that you're excited to hear about the Roseanne uh, revival. Well, very much because they've got they've got basically the entire original cast, including both Beckys. Like Sarah Chalk is going right. to be some character named Andrea or whatever. But like they got the entire original cast back, and who doesn't love who doesn't hate- love Dan Goodman or, or John Goodman and and Roseanne Barr and and Laurie Metcalf and you know what I mean? This guy right here. You were too I young. Hate, you don't you I don't count. Roseanne. You don't you but don't. How count. are you going to bring back John Goodman's you don't character? Like like how are you doing I don't know. that? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> and you're not a writer, so maybe you know, maybe the, he maybe he never so died. Then be damned. I don't. I don't care how they do it. It was a great show. Like even if it's only a season long, I'll probably watch it. Like unless the first couple episodes completely suck. Yeah, because we've as we've known taking things that have gone past 10, 20 years and rebooting them totally works out. That's why Zoolander two was so good. That's why Anchorman two was so good. I mean, I mean, you're just rolling in things that this obviously works with. This was an incredibly popular show, right? But like, I feel like and. Its primary followers at this point, CJ, are retired or soon to be retired. Um, I feel like they don't have a whole lot to do at eight o'clock on a Wednesday or whatever. You know what I mean? Like as soon as instead of going to bed when after the wheel, they can watch Roseanne again. This is true. All right. All right. right. I'll, so I'll give you Roseanne. Here's that. You know, then speaking of, of reboots and, and redoing movies, I, I, I you put the story in, into our list here. Overboard. The the, yep. the famous movie with with Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn is getting a, a remake. Yeah, like a reverse remake. Um, it's like a gender flip, and I put it in there because when I was a kid, I loved this movie. I don't know. I don't remember if it was like eighty eight, eighty nine, but it was like at the height of popularity for both Kurt Russell and and Goldie Hawn, and it I I loved it. Like I I absolutely love that movie. Um, I do not love Anna Faris. Me neither. I mean, not even a little bit. Not, not, not even slightly. Uh, I think she's a dog shit actress, but I think she could play white trash pretty well. So, and I mean this with all respect that. to Goldie Hawn. There are a couple moments where she has a Goldie Hawn esque 
like persona. A, a, except like, Goldie Goldie Hawn was like the the she was a rich lady right. who got thrust into this white trash household and ended up falling in love with right. But family. we've seen Goldie Hawn um, in trashy things. I mean, she just did that terrible movie with uh, what's her face, Amy Poehler, uh, which she played a, a no white trash. Amy Schumer. Amy, Amy Schumer, Schumer. My bad. Amy Schumer. Who I, I mean, I'm aware that a movie was made, but I I didn't even watch a trailer because Amy Schumer. So uh, I look, I, I don't, I didn't put it in there because I think this is going to be a good movie. But um, you know, I, when it hits Netflix, I'll watch it because Overboard and it's a it's a cool story, and uh, you know, I like that. But I don't like anything else about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not crazy about this. I'm not a fan of Anna Faris. I know my my wife is because she's watching the show Mom. Uh, which has Alice and Janney, which I just think Alice and Janney, Alice and Janney in it. Everybody is now better because Alice and Janney's there. But you know, take Alice and Janney away, right. it's, you know, you're still Anna Ferris. But I, I don't know, man. This this is going on my on my past list. I'm like, eh, I'm not hard passing, but um, have you seen Overboard? Yeah, loved it. It's fantastic. Okay, so I mean, as, I've seen as it. I don't need a reboot. Go, Thank you. As reboots go, this is pretty harmless. I'll give it a watch. It's probably going to be awful, but you know, you know what? I'll give you that. This is a pretty harmless reboot. This isn't a reboot. I feel like, oh, why, why? It's like, no. It's not affecting anything. Like Overboard is nobody's favorite movie. <laughs> you know what? I uh, I will put that out to the listeners because I think you are right. Right. It's <laughs> there's nobody like, hey, hey, top five movies all time. They're like, well, I tell you what, I can't decide on four, but Overboard's got to be on the list. <laughs> like, there's, there's nobody saying that. And and that's not out of like no disrespect to Kurt Russell, because I'm sure there's some people who are like top five all time. Big Trouble in Little China. It's got to be on the yeah. list. And I, I OK, I, I like I'll give you that. But nobody's going Overboard. Overboard Ooh, you know, I, I was my, my top one. five and it was between Overboard and The Godfather. So I had to go with Overboard. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you would – would you put that in the top five of Kurt Russell? Oh, movies? because Godfather so contrived. Oh. Like it, There's that right? whole scene where they're sitting on chairs and I can't understand what they're saying. They're speaking Italian, jerk. Um, so, uh, like, I just – it's it's fine. It's harmless. Like, I mean, out of things that could, could screw up your year, this is pretty Yeah, it's pretty harmless. It's not going to mess anybody. And you want, though, there are going to be a slew of people who are like, oh, this sounds like a really interesting movie. You're like, oh, you don't know this is a remake. You don't know that this. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know what I know. Yeah. I mean, look, I watched the trailer. It's not good. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't even know uh, who the male actor is. I've never seen this man on my life. No, he's uh, no, he's just some dude. Like he's <laughs> he's some dude. I, I don't even. Blew the, we blew the budget on Anna Ferris. Okay. Well, I mean, if you yeah, if you have like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar budget, that's where you blow. You, you go, hey Anna Ferris, can you <laughs> just act like a ditz for a while? Although uh, Eva Longoria is in it, and I, I enjoy Eva Longoria carrying an extra 10, 20 pounds, which is nice. <laughs> I don't know if that was a dick on Eva Longoria. She looks like a real girl now. Yes. She doesn't look she like, like a, a tiny little, like a tiny little thing. Yeah, she's right? not she the, looks like a real. She looks like an actual like housewife real, now, right? Instead like an the, actual woman. Yeah, right. she looks like a real woman. And I, she's gorgeous. So, like, that's nice. Okay. I thought you were digging she, on her. She's playing like, like that. Hey. No, no, no. But, like, the like Kurt Russell had, like, the sloppy best friend. She's like that, but not sloppy. True. And no mullet. You got <laughs> you to gotta appreciate the lack of I, mullet I, in this movie. I Although I kind of feel like Anna Faris looks like she has a <laughs> mullet a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like her hair is, like, surrounding her face, and it's just very off-putting. Tell me how you really feel, please. Or, or maybe it's her face that's off put. I don't know. But it something about it. That's it. It's exactly it. You hit the nail on the head. <laughs> All right, good. So in in my in my perusing of the internet, I stumbled pro, uh, across a, an article on college humor. Before you run away, just hold on. It's twelve movie cliches that can officially be retired. Uh, we're not going to go through all twelve here, but I wanted to pull a few from the list that really do bother me uh, every time I, I I watch some some good movies. Even good movies have these tropes in it. The one that I come across a lot in uh, superhero movies is, is this one on the list, that a superhero with new powers punches a guy, then stares in amazement at his own strength. I, I really uh, – I get it. While it, is a, while it is a cliche, uh, if it's the first time you've done it, you'd probably be pretty astonished. Like if it were you. Yeah. Right, and you knocked a guy in the next week, you'd be like, holy hell, I didn't know I could do that's that. True. Like, I don't know my own strength. And that seems like a perfectly reasonable reaction. But I have to stare at my hand. I can't be like, whoa. I have to like, ah, oh, my hand. To be or not to be. I uh, get it. I get it in the real I mean, world. But in the movies, uh, we've, we've seen a lot. 
The other one that that was on here too, there was a uh, teachers frantically yelling at an assignment after the bell. Listen, I, I don't know what the high school you all went to. When the bell rung, fuck it, teacher, mute. I don't hear you. Gone. I'm out. Uh, you assign homework. Doesn't mean nah. they weren't talking. Bell rung. No. I wasn't there. Nah, I didn't hear it. I I didn't, I didn't do a paper. You, where, when did you tell us to do a paper? I was out the door as soon as the bell was out. No. Did that happen to you that in real life? doesn't mean they didn't tell you. Did, really? That's usually the first time. Oh, read chapter 42 and I want a three-page paper. Well, I mean, if, if, if they said it as you're leaving, then they said it. What, what on this list did, did you find that was a little just, nah, no thanks? Uh, um, I mean, the person turning down a better job at the end of the movie stayed, stayed a crappy job. Like, that one seems very predictable to me. Um, but you know what, man? For for the most part, like, all right, your teacher fran- frantically yelling an assignment after the bell. I I can see that it happens. I can do without seeing it in a movie. Right. Um, this thing uh, it's never happened to me the, in real life. It's only happening in movies. No, I mean, I've I've had that happen in real life. Yeah. Teachers telling you what to do as you're leaving the room. Sure. Um the rest of these, like, I'm pretty okay with. Asshole government officials ig- ignore all advice from obviously correct protagonists. Like, if we didn't have that in movies, we wouldn't have an antagonist. <laughs> that's, that's also so the, I, whole, like, f- the whole plot structure to the Ghostbusters. So I, I feel like that's the whole plot to a lot of movies. Right. Like, that was essentially the plot of uh, Star Trek, the, like the latest <laughs> Star Trek movie. Right, so, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I just I like I I don't think we can do without this specific cliche. Um, if characters talking for the first time, instantly cutting them having sex didn't happen, Tony Stark would cease to absolutely. Exist. So uh, I don't think we can do there, without. There was that. there was I have one more that I was like, yeah, I agree, this needs to stop, and that's old people doing something that only young people are supposed to do. Like like when when you know old people rap or get high. I mean like that's all of Grandma's Boy. Like all of Grandma's Boy is that premise. But I love Grandma's. But we boy. could do without Grandma's Boy, right? Oh, no, I mean, I love Grandma's just boy. in general. How dare you? Oh, no. Here's here's no, the one that I'm like. No. Listen, you need this. This one needs to stay. What you mean? What you mean is it's all Happy Madison Productions. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. I, I I understand, but like that 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 cliche, old person does something that only young people are supposed to do. That's like every. Every single Adam right. Sandler. But there was also like Dirty Grandpa and uh, probably that new movie that Zach Braff did with three old guys. Nobody saw Dirty Grandpa. Oh, God. I wish nobody saw Dirty Grandpa. I wish I could scrub that mem- that movie from my brain. <laughs> the one, though, that I think needs to stay is they have uh, someone's current boyfriend or girlfriend is a relentless asshole. That's that great. Needs, that Love that creates so much tension. I'm so on board with that. It's also how, you know, like Wedding Crashers and a couple other movies, you know, get get their turn. Bradley Cooper is a asshole. Yes, I'm fine with that. Let it happen. Yeah, uh, yeah, fine, absolutely fine. All that's good. No issues with that. I mean, most of this list, I think, is 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 really is reaching. But yeah, someone says you look like you've seen a ghost to someone who's literally just seen a ghost. Yeah. Also, right, how are you gonna does get that rid happen of? a lot? Like, is that a really like common thing that you like? Th- I mean, in a movie where someone sees a ghost, there's is generally followed by you look like you've seen a ghost. So, like, okay. Characters don't care about sacrificing themselves. That speaks to the character right. of that character. So you can't you can't do without that. Are there any cliches just, that you can think of though that we should get rid of? Or something that maybe you just you're you're gonna shatter the glass for somebody, something that you're like, oh yep, by the way, this is gonna happen in every movie that you're gonna see in twenty eighteen. Is there a thing that you you can think of? Um it's not it's not a it's not a movie, it's not a movie cliche. It's it's uh essentially an American media cliche that I just can't I can't deal with at all. And that is everywhere you look in in commercials, in cartoons, in movies, uh, it, look this and, and was my th- my bile was recently in ascension because of of the Walmart Christmas commercial. It's you know December twenty third. Yeah, and I had a the Walmart too. commercial is it's raining men. Yeah, and everybody coming in are all these men who are now n- just now doing their Christmas shopping because they can't be bothered to think about anybody but themselves until December twenty third. Right. And uh, we're watching it. And, you know, Laura, she looks over at me and she's like, everybody knows you you, you take care of us. It's okay. And I'm like, see, but the American father is portrayed as an idiot, as a buffoon, 
Uh, and it's just not the case, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of brilliant, smart, attentive, caring men in the world, but we are portrayed CJ as idiots. now. To be fair, I actually know one person who fits that mold to a T, who is a bumbling, stupid idiot who is forgetful. But I think he's the exception that proves the rule. Well, that's the yeah. I I that like that's in the minority. Right. Right. No, the I agree. Husbands and fathers that I know that are that are my friends, that they don't fit that mold. And it just I can do without ever seeing that cliche ever again. And the problem is that Peter Griffin is funny and Homer Simpson is funny. Right. So that's apparently that's all 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 American fathers now. All. I didn't know Peter Griffin was funny. That was that's some news to me. Mm, so we have that and I can do without ever seeing that cliche ever again. Right. The, the deadbeat dad, uh, learns his lesson. I can do with that. That's, that's the movie. That's there the movie is. cliche. I, there it is. I'm done with deadbeat dad learns his lesson. And you know what? There's no top in that. So we're going to move on because I also like to scour the internet and just find the weird, find the obscure. And I'd love to ask for a tech perspective. Uh, and we're starting off with this because it is a new year. It is 2018. Uh, I figured we would attack some of the casualties of 2017's technology and 2018's endangered species list. Now, this was on uh, CNET, uh, and there's some in here that uh, I agree with, and some that I uh, and some that I don't. Can we go through these? Because I I really think the the first one is 3D TV. God bless that stuff. Uh, I've never used it. I don't endorse it. Bye bye. Yeah, and this was the year where people stopped making it, which is, I mean. Fantastic. And we used to be in the retail environment and there were times where, you know, hey, we had to sell one and you felt kind of kind of bad doing it. Uh, the other one I had was uh, the other one they had was Microsoft Connect, uh, which I, I'm a little sad to see it go. But at the same all cameras, all cameras connected to consoles. Should go <laughs> yeah, away. just it's 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 not good. Uh, and really, when it came down to it, the only thing you yelled at the connect was volume up, volume down, record that. And uh, hey, Cortana, turn on my Xbox. That was it. Yeah, I I can do without all uh all all cameras connected to my console. Go <laughs> you already you already had, why is it just a spying thing? You already got enough of them or No, it just I just doesn't make any sense to me. Like I just we just traded in Christian and I just traded in the Wii U um and finally hooked up the PS4. But like the depreciation on this thing, oh, yeah. I I've never seen anything. It's it's ridiculous. It's worse than the car. It, just console video game consoles with 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 Cameras connected are stupid, yep. so that's that's gone. Um, I saw Adobe like uh, they're they're killing off uh, future updates for the perpetual license of yeah. This is just the Lightroom, world. like Lightroom Creative Cloud. This is the world just moving to everything's a subscription. Like everything is a subscription. Like nothing is perpetual license but, anymore now. I am not smart enough to manipulate Adobe in any way. Um, I have friends that are brilliant and can do amazing Me things, too. but I am a total idiot, so I don't care about that. Um, AIM went away. We were sad about it when it happened. I'm no less sad about it now. Yep. Um, the iPod Nano and else? the iPod Shuffle are officially gone, and now the only thing it's left like is... like these people don't own an iPhone. I, I Interesting story. I bought my niece an iPod Touch a few, maybe a year or two ago, and she's now the age where we can go ahead and buy her a phone. And I was like, hey, I'll, you know, we'll give you an iPhone here, but if we sell your iPod Touch, we can get you a better iPod. She goes, no, I want to keep it. I'm like, I don't think you understand phones the right way because you're going to have <laughs> your entire, everything from your iPod Touch. All of the features plus. Plus a phone. Just right. like, no, I want to keep it. I'm like, I'm not buying you a phone if you're, if you're going to do this. So no phone. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Is she baby driver? <laughs> no, she's not baby driver. Well, I'm just saying, if she were baby driver, she would need to keep that iPod. Right. Okay. That's it. That's but she's only, not. Th- that is the only person on the planet allowed to have a ton of iPods. He's got like a ton of them. It's if you're baby driver. I, I'm, I'm fine with that going away. Um, I just, just, I, I am just as fine with the, uh, Hear One earbuds. Never even going heard away. Of them. Yep. Right. Well, I mean, I've seen they were they were they were the first like like widely advertised, like super small in ear, truly wireless buds kind of thing. And they they sucked. Uh, AirPods are a bajillion times better. I can't. Um, 
t- uh, the other day I was thinking to myself, man, I really need some wireless headphones. And I was like, I'm just going to get the eye- the ear pods. And then I keep seeing people with the ear pods. Air pods. Their- Air pods. I'm sorry. I keep seeing AirPods. people with Air pods in their in their ears. And I'm like, I can't look like this. This is ridiculous. So I'll wait. What you'd rather like wear the Bose yep. ones that protrude? No, no. I'd rather just wear the wires. I'm just going to wear the wires. I'm just going to live my life that way. I mean, when I'm on a plane, I wear ear pods and they have wires, right? But other otherwise, I I use AirPods and they're amazing. Can't do it yet. Amazing. The one that was th- this is great. The one that just came and went, just like candle in the wind, flash in the pan. That was so damn quick was Google Maps calorie counter, which was of course a cupcake. Uh, well, nobody nobody used it, right? Because everybody's got some other health and fitness app. Uh, no, they were just like, hey, like. Like a cupcake, like you're gonna fat shame me, and I'm walking. Like that's what you're gonna do. Well, no, I mean it's 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 turning the calories you burn into mini cupcakes, right? Right. Where I would turn it into say bites of a cheesesteak, right? Like, oh, if they could do, right? if it's like choose your own emoji, I'd be on board. Squirts for that. of squirts into my mouth of easy cheese. <laughs> This is how much spray cheese you can spray into your mouth based on how far you've walked. Right. Like Doritos. Like this is how many Doritos you can eat. Basically, Yeah, I'm all about tacos. I would yeah, totally do it. Fiery, taco. fiery Cheetos. <laughs> flaming hot flamin Cheetos. Flaming hot Cheetos. You have walked exactly 27 flaming hot Google, Cheetos. Google, you are welcome for all of these suggestions and you may bring that back. <laughs> and uh, I just expect, I don't know, give me, give me a couple pixels. That's all I need. Uh, skipping chat box because they're stupid. <laughs> all chat bots are dumb. Oh, the uh, skipping. Uh, sc- oh, can we skip the juice the, press? Oh, Do we need I this? I have to tell you, I have people who are all about the $700 Wi-Fi connected juice press. They lived with this Do you this thing. really know people who I do. And you know, use a I, juice press? I, I did. I know these people who use this exact juice press. Do you know what really brought it down? Do you know what really brought down this juice press? If you got the juice, it came in a bag. You could just squeeze the bag and get your juice. They're like, why am I paying seven hundred dollars for something to just squeeze wait, wait, wait. it? So you have to buy a proprietary juice bag. Yeah, you bought the juice bag. It was like a subscription, like because everything was a subscription. You wait, you, no. So you're not you're not loading fresh things into this machine. No. You're, it's a machine that you preload with juice that yeah, has already it's like, been squoze. It's like you put a Capri Sun in this juicer and it's like, hey, you know what I know you have a hard time doing? Poking the straw in the Capri Sun. I got your back, man. But no, it's just that easy. You just go to a stab, squeeze, done. They paid $700 and then they got the packs. They're like, I can do this myself. Like, why am I doing this? So goodbye that juicer. It was worth it. Mm, okay. The other one here Next. is the, the Logitech Harmony Link. Got discontinued in 2018, and by the way, the way Logitech did this was just – they were they were assholes because they just sent out an email saying, hey, all your uh, Harmony Link stuff, it's, it, it's dead. We're, just, we're not supporting it at all. They're going to break it. We're just going to yeah. break it. And everyone's like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? They're like, well, you know what? You have to go to the cloud to do it, and da 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 It's very hard, so we're just going to shut it all down. And they're like, uh, nope. So they have offered wow. that uh, they, they would replace it. They are actually replacing – the the hardware for you for free and it's like a three hundred dollar piece of equipment that they're giving you for free because they royally screwed up the way yeah they they're they're replacing it with uh, a Harmony Ultimate yes. right so go so buy I, oh, here's I the best own, part you don't have to have proof of purchase for this so if you just got a Harmony Link off of eBay I'm just saying I, I own um, a Harmony Ultimate I bought one for my father in law to resolve his four hundred or four hundred remote situation rhymes with uh, Schmish Morshman. <laughs> <laughs> and and anyway, I got mine to replace a a <clears throat> like going on its last leg Harmony 650. Uh it's dude, the Harmony Ultimate's brilliant. It's not only is it a great remote, really intuitive, great touchscreen, but everything works from my phone, which was sort of the the goal anyway. If I don't have to touch yeah. a remote, I I control right? my, my phone, my everything. Everything is controlled yep. by my phone. Yeah. Through my phone. The Harmony Ultimate system is is very good. I'd recommend it to anybody. Right. So I, I I get it. Um, Nikon is discon- discontinuing uh, a DL series. I don't yeah, care. I'm moving yep. past the cameras. <laughs> I have so um, many friends who are upset about this one, the Snapchat spectacles. I have friends who are so into Snapchat. A couple of them are like, you know, Snapchat personalities and they bought this thing because right they off. put they 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 put on their glasses so that as soon as they see a dick, it automatically sends <laughs> That's exactly it. Exactly. Like it. what? Yep. How does that work? So is the glasses detect dick? <laughs> right. Then, it's like the the thing from Silicon Valley, you know, where it detects dicks and and removes them. This no, does the boot, opposite, right? 
No, so this was this was uh you you would wear the glasses, you would tap a little button, and then a light shows up on the uh, the glasses so people know you're recording, and you record your Snapchat. Yeah. They know that you're seeing their dick. <laughs> Yes. They can make their dick into poses. You can put a little so emojis can, and masks on them. You know, absolutely. I mean, it seems great to have other people take all the dick pics instead of you doing it yourself. <laughs> it gave some cool experiences, though, for going out into the nope, world. Nope, but no, no, no. It, 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 Next, it Windows phones, sign on. I will remember no, how terrible you were. Nobody cares. And in a, in a related story, Microsoft announced it was shutting down its Groove Music streaming service. I've never yeah. heard of it. <laughs> So one of those oh the fact that it's ending i'm okay uh whatever um i'm just gonna i'm gonna motor through a couple of these there's another set uh, oh. of uh wireless ear no 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 hold on wait wait about. this one don't motor through this this one's crazy have you heard this story so it's called kanoa clearly not so kanoa mm. so the story behind this is actually really fascinating this guy uh went to ces 2016 made a complete splash there and toted about these wireless headphones before like the airpods were even uh, like in in production or in the rumor mill uh and by august of this year the company was just gone just filed for bankruptcy and just left and here's the thing he defrauded he defrauded everybody he defrauded everybody and the thing was he didn't do it as a crowdsourcing like he didn't do it as like a uh, hey i'm i'm making these things and you can get pre-ordered like he sold them as pre-orders like this is coming and then he went out and he didn't pay the designers he didn't pay the manufacturers he only sent out two pair of working headphones to youtube reviewers and the one guy hated them so much he ripped them apart and that apparently was the drama that forced him to go bankrupt he like went after this youtuber afterward and said well you're the reason why all these people aren't getting their headphones and he's like what are you crazy this is an amazing story. I'm going to put a link in the show notes to one of the YouTubers explaining his experience with these guys. It's a three like movie, a three uh, video uh, series. It's totally worth your time. So is this is is this guy that defrauded everybody? Is he suing the like? Is it he's suing the YouTuber for libel or slander? No, no, no. He whatever? he just went after him like publicly and said, "Hey, you're an asshole, and you're the reason why everybody is is not getting their their headphones." And now, but he has his 1.2 million. Yeah, he's dollars. got his million dollars and just ghosted, and he's done. He's he's not even Good in America you. anymore. He's in another country. That doesn't do extradition. Good like for you. Conned everybody. That's some shit. That's interesting. All right. I'm, I'm moving on. Uh, Jawbone apparently took forever, like five years to figure out they can't compete in the <laughs> yeah, I was fitness su- wearable I was su- market. I thought after like the 2012, uh, 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 whatever that thing was, Jawbone up. up catching on yeah. fire, that was the end of it. But apparently not. Uh, Jawbone ceasing to make stuff. Um, no there's a, a, a crowdfunder drone that failed. I think all drones are failures unless, unless you're buying one of like the $800 yeah. ones at Costco. And you're also, uh, by the way, a naval aviator and can fly a drone, but otherwise let's just leave that the UAV thing to the government, shall we? <laughs> yep. Um, uh, Microsoft paint. Bye bye. Oh, no, no, that, that was, everybody. that was near death. That thing. Everybody who who wants to draw dicks is now sad. You can still get paint in the Windows Store just for the people who miss Microsoft Paint. I use Microsoft Paint every once in a while. It's it, it's handy to have. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, phone headphone jacks on life support is is what I'm. Yeah. Seeing. So this uh, is the, you know uh, everything from the Google Pixel, which mocked Apple for removing the headphone jack, uh, to losing it. Uh, the essential phone, uh, a couple of HTC phones. Uh, yeah, th- HTC, Google, like all these guys. I don't know about Apple, but I think HTC and Google very courageous. <laughs> they have courage. You know who's really courageous though? Samsung. They're like, hey, we still have one. It's not that hard. Figure it out. <laughs> Nobody cares. You know what? You have a headphone jack. The phone may or may not explode. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, the iPad Mini is rumored to go away. I'm okay with that. I, I mean, I have, I have. There are three iPad Minis in my house. They're fine, but like, you know, they're just big. Just get a plus and you're like, oh, I don't need an iPad mini. That's what I just discovered. It's not worth it. Uh, yes, I have an iPhone 10, so I don't have that problem. Um, robotic dog. <laughs> yeah, it was a Sony robotic I mean, dog. That may be coming back. Creepy. We don't need it. We don't need it. This, the, the last one is actually something that I just had a discussion about because the Mac mini. Oh, I love the Mac mini. Hasn't had an update like in years, like five years. More than the Mac and Pro. And that's saying something. Yeah, it is. Um, and it, it's one of those things where, like, 
I just spent some money to upgrade my iMac um, to prolong its life. I'm st- I, like, I was thinking, you know, why didn't I go with a Mac mini? Wouldn't I replace it with a Mac mini and then multiple displays? You know, and the argument that I got from, from one of our friends was, dude, the Mac mini is like five years yeah. old. I don't know why you would do that. And you can't replace the Ram um, and everything else. It's all soldered. Right, right, right. So like, I'm down to this thing where like, I have to consider like a hinge dock and like multiple, like 27 inch displays just cause I want to be cool like that, but I'm not, but I want to be. The Mac Mini going away would be sad because I, I really like the the footprint of it, um, but I, I I won't own one because it obsolescence. That's why, you know. But it goes away. It goes away. I don't care. Uh, I'm never gonna buy a Windows PC, so I just have to deal with the available. Apple one that's option. not on the list, which is is is, is definitely shark circling in the water, is Title. Title just announced that they are not doing very well. As a music, well, who's paying twenty bucks a month for time? I don't know. It's, it, and, and well, it's it's the people who are like I can hear the difference. By the way, of the of the higher quality music with my three hundred dollar cell phone and nineteen dollar coffee. No, you can't. You, you can't, can't do it. I'm sorry. Just go to Spotify. nineteen dollar coffee. Listen, where are you getting your coffee? I, I don't get coffee. I don't know what that stuff costs. Well, it's ridiculous. You're just now. You're just throwing figures out there that don't exist. Well, hipsters and, and probably look, pay. There I is am, probably a nineteen dollar Kopi Lua account. Listen, coffee. Listen, I am that asshole with like I, the daily trip to Starbucks. I had ten shots of espresso today. I have. I couldn't tell that, by the way, not like at all. Ten, ten. I had ten shots of espresso today. So I'm also curious to hear what your thoughts, though, not you, the listener. I'm curious to hear what you, listener, <laughs> you're, not, not you, you asshole. Josh, fuck you. The other guys. I'm, I'm very curious to hear you, the listener, what your thoughts are on the tech that is either going to die in 2018 or what is the new tech, the stuff that we should be looking at in 2018, or what or what needs to die. Yeah, that'd yeah. Be, <laughs> what needs. To what go? should we old the yeller, please? Someone's gonna reply to this. Android podcast. OS. Could we? Could we? Oh, could we? Could we? Eighty six Android OS. Is that possible? No. Windows. Yeah, I could. I could see getting rid of. No, I can't even see getting rid of Windows. How's Russia gonna hack us if they don't have Windows? <laughs> <laughs> or Android? Yeah. Right. There you go. What will they do? How are you gonna do that? All right. Josh, do you remember? Uh, probably in the middle of twenty sixteen. Uh, we talked about Nintendo Power. The first 13 years of it were added to the Internet Archive. I do remember. And the final issue of Nintendo Power was published on December 11th, 2012. But, ladies and gentlemen, Nintendo Power is returning as a podcast, official podcast from Nintendo. Uh, it is run by mm. the editor-in-chief of Nintendo Power right now, which, by the way, how did you hold on to that job since 2012? Chris Slate, yeah. Good job, Chris Slate. Good job. Um, it's interesting. They're, they've been very uh, forthcoming with the fact that they don't know what the show's going to be like, that they're really kind of developing it based off of fan feedback. Uh, but they went into some uh, fantastic conversations with some great people about The Legend of uh, Zelda, The Breath of the Wild. Um, you're laughing. I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't help it. All right. So, Go ahead. What do you got? I was a subscriber to Nintendo Power when I was a kid, and I got I got the issue, and I, I read it every month. So what I'm envisioning with this podcast is a bunch of guys, like, either A, dictating a walkthrough, or, like, <laughs> talking about the steps you need to take to 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 find the boomerang in Jabu Jabu's <laughs> belly. Like, I, I don't... If you're continuing our playthrough of uh, Zelda That's, the that's where I'm at, like, talking like it's NPR, Please right? Like, jump now I don't, and avoid the bomber. Is that what I, you're expecting? Like, uh, you need to find more Deku berries <laughs> because you're going to need them in the next... But not only that, that's actually not my biggest qualm with oh, this. Oh, okay. My biggest issue is... Where's my centerfold? <laughs> like what? What? So, what? Here's the where deal. is my map centerfold? When no one's buying uh, gaming magazines anymore, just nobody's doing it. Because if you want gaming news, you go on the internet and you either listen to a podcast, right? Or you're, yeah. if you want to walk through, you're going on YouTube and or Twitch and you're watching someone do a walkthrough of the game. So, Ooh, the te- what, but what Nintendo has to offer to people and why I think it was better as a podcast and how you'll get your centerfold, Josh. Uh, is you have people that actually make the games, people that have the industry knowledge, people that can tell you history of games, right? You get some of that nostalgia, but also talking about current projects. And Josh, you just go to a website and bam, there's your centerfold right there. And if you really want to, uh, you know, command P and you can print it out. Is it like, is it subscription based or? No, is it's, it- it's, it's free. 
It's a podcast. My my centerfold is oh free. oh yeah well yeah you just go to the show notes what you just you want so you want a subscription again because everything that says is a, a subscription that's where I'm at with it is like <sighs> it like how is this sustainable if people aren't paying for it there's ad revenue that you can you can probably do through it no I understand but that's I mean come on that's that's cl- it's all clickbait uh, but again, didn't we cover the fact that Nintendo could just not do anything for like five years no I know I know and that's and that's Brian's argument and and I agree with him he's absolutely right right they've got all the cash in the world every time they release a new Mario a new Zelda it, it's an absolute windfall every time they release a system it sells out immediately it doesn't matter if it's a switch or an NES classic or an SNES classic which by the way costs nothing to manufacture and bring in at least all the right. revenues. So I get it they they're 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 liquid. That's that's Nintendo, super liquid. Right. However, it just it seems to me like if there were a small subscription it would be taken more seriously. See I I I unfortunately think it's a little bit of a a generation gap here. You're a cheap bastard. You're well, a I am cheap a cheap bastard. bastard too but also like Nobody wants a, a magazine for their video games anymore because the by the no t- no 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 not not a magazine right but like don't there there gotta there has to be some recurring internet subscription like outside of RedTube that you pay for and how does Nintendo factor into that though like what could Nintendo do to to make that interesting how can Nintendo get five dollars a month from you what what could they do uh, I don't know that it'd be five dollars a month but like if if I got maps to every title or walkthroughs to every title um i i might pay up to 19.99 annually like 19.99 annually yeah that's not that's how not, many people not worth the time to make it why not if they're going to give it away for free right why not get it's, some additional revenue it's basically it. like a dollar 50 a month like like it's well, you've done some math. There. I said basically not all a dollar sixty. Not all of the math. Yeah, yeah, it, that's essentially. But and and that's kind of the point, right? Is that it's it's a it is a fee that is negligible, and that and that anybody that loves Nintendo will go, yeah, I'd pay that, right? So why not? Like, why not charge for? Because you can get it for free, and Nintendo's not that guy. They should be. They should be, but they're not. People take them and more I'm seriously. And I'm thankful. Nintendo, listen, Nintendo has no problem being taken seriously. They're like, we have more cash on hand than anybody of you do, so we're, we're good. I think the only people giving us a run for the money no, is Apple. No, 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 Nobody takes Nintendo seriously. What? Like, nobody actually, like, when you go, when you look at buying a console, you're like Xbox or PlayStation, and then, like, if I want to play Mario... Do I also get this? No, thing? nobody. The, the you will take Nintendo seriously and not take all these Kickstarter consoles. Those are the ones that you don't take seriously. The, Wait, there's people. Oh making yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, that aren't emulators. That aren't emulators. Yep. Well, no. Yeah, those are the ones no one cares about. Console gaming is dumb. It's dumb. It's dumb. Right. Okay. 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 So let's move away from the online gaming yelling thing right now. What do you just think about the fact that at least Nintendo is trying to remain relevant with with gamers and talk to them as a community through Nintendo Power Podcast? They should charge for it. <laughs> this is an opportunity to talk to you about our Patreon, where you can go. <laughs> <laughs> they should charge Five for it. A month. They should they charge should for it. That's uh. yes, they should. Uh, anything anything really worth worth listening to that you like that 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 gets you through maybe your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work is worth paying for <laughs> yes i agree right i agree josh That's, it's just, look and you know, I, since I, it's the I'm new saying, year and, and honestly honestly the things that i i really enjoy like fantasy football right there are i subscribe to a couple different fantasy football premium content type things and not because i have to i could do it without right. that but i find that it enhances my experience that's all that's all i'm saying enhance your experience is this where i npr the uh and we're doing our drive right now where you can go ahead and support our show <laughs> yeah you could you could npr that <laughs> all right well let's move on all right now since it is the end of the year i figured we would wrap today's show by looking at some of the best memes of 2017 
To which I also realize that this is an audio program, so stick with us on that one because we're going to figure out a way. Or to just be- look at the show notes, click the link, and then you can you can see while you're driving or walking. <laughs> no, around. not while you're driving. No, opposite of that. Well, I'm I'm fine with you doing it while you're driving. I'm assuming you're responsible. You're the people. passenger. Please be the passenger. Don't drink and drive. But like otherwise. Look, I got to tell you, I, I'm not sure I've pulled up next to a car at a stoplight where the person wasn't on their phone. <laughs> All right, that's true. I just don't want to be responsible for the – it's like the President Bartlett thing where you said uh, your seatbelt and it's tell you, buddy, uh, you know, whatever whatever these people do in their cars, I'm not responsible for. I can suggest anything. They still have to take action. Check out these memes. They're in the show notes. I was curious to hear some of the ones that, that you felt were really good or like really memorable for this year. Uh, cause there's um, 50 of them, right? <laughs> like that's, there are 50, the 50 best memes of the year. Um, uh, I, I particularly enjoyed, um, Ohio state trolling Apple, which was pretty cool. Yeah. The, right? the a uh, question mark, uh, uh yeah, issue. yeah. The yep. a question mark, uh, was, 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 uh, signaled by the fans in, in one of the sections of the horseshoe there. Um, I must've watched this, uh, the chef oh salt, salt bay salt bay like uh, like i've seen that a bunch of times the meme is 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 equally funny you know i mean a lot of my, these are kinda, my favorite like, one that i fell down the rabbit hole was the shooting stars if you don't know the shooting stars if you hear this audio you'll know exactly what i'm talking about usually has someone like falling that i i lose my shit every single time on them because they're they're just they're so Good and th- there's a video in the show notes that has like a, a collection of them. Oh God, it just you'll lose you'll lose like ten minutes just watching them. Uh, the other one that I like too was the uh, the roll safe, the guy who's like do tomorrow, do tomorrow, and it's you know D U E tomorrow, D O tomorrow. Like I gotta be smart, gotta think. Uh, and then <laughs> and then the distracted boyfriend. That one just took over the internet. I I, I absolutely love the distracted boyfriend. Uh, it's like eating healthy, and then you, he turns around and looks at the other girls like bag of Cheetos. You're like, mm, yeah, all right, sounds accurate. I I was uh, very much a fan of the the white trash girl, the catch me outside girl. Catch me outside, how about that? Uh, I, I like I found that shit hilarious. Like every time somebody dropped it, I thought it was great. Um, the one that didn't make the list. Ooh. Um, that, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm doing a, a quick scroll to make sure all of the, uh, Joe Biden, oh, every the, one of the, all the Joe Biden, the memes. Joe Biden, Obama sort of, uh, man crush <laughs> memes, yes. all of like, I could not, could not get enough. It didn't, didn't matter. Like you could, you could actually take political content completely out of this, and it was still, still hilarious. hilarious. It's just, it's just watching a, um, a bromance, just like in a whole nother level. It really, it was really, really good. And there, there were several of them that actually forced my brain to reboot. <laughs> um, they, they were just so good, and they didn't make this list. I, I, I so think some of them I, were I from was, twenty. 16 though i think that's why it's like the tail end of 2016 no i yeah, and you might be right but like they carry oh they did like, clear through inauguration Absolutely. so like the, it, i considered a 2017 thing it, it was it was just really solid and i i can i still like every I, yeah i come across one every now and then that i hadn't seen and it's fucking hilarious uh, and this is just this is a good reference just to have because if you go on Twitter, if you go on Reddit, if you go on Facebook, you, you're going to start seeing some of these things because it's the end of their life cycle. And just being in the know for them is sometimes a, just a, a good thing to to have. Uh, a couple honorable mentions I also want to include was the floor is right, like the floor is lava, the floor is cement. Uh, those were there. One that needs to stop and die in a fire and just stop again for the rest of my life, and I never want to see it is the stupid. Uh, like circle game where you know, if you look at the 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 whole. Well, clearly you never played. I did. The I played. I don't know what the hell the damn thing's called. I th- like I stopped playing that in two thousand and five. Like, why is it back? It's back because you get to punch it's your friends stupid. when they look at it. You can nope. just punch somebody now. It's no problem. No, nope. no, there's no premise nope. you need. Just you need to earn the right. Let, let me. I, let, I will tell you a story, and the story goes like this: We were kids. Uh, my 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 buddy, uh, Brent. And myself, and we were working at a retailer in uh, car the car audio business there. 
I sort of was was uh, the supervisor, and he was like an installer guy, and there was this this like sort of grizzled older dude. He was like easy. I think I think I think Mike was like nine years older than us, and had been around for a long time, and and would just torment us, just absolutely torment in every way you could possibly. Because we were dumb kids, we were like eighteen, nineteen years right. old. But that circle game, this dude was like flawless victory fatality type, <laughs> right? Right. To the point where like it was summertime, um, a bunch of us like went to the beach or whatever. And, you know, like you take off your shirt and both my arms and shoulders were varying shades of purple because this dude just, I mean, he annihilated my arms. And he was also the dude, like, he'd do the circle game, and you'd look, and you'd shit, and he'd hit you, and immediately after he hit you, he'd go for it again, you'd flinch, and then you'd get two for flinching, right? And then you'd, you'd catch him, you'd catch him, like, and again, like, we're 18, 19, he's like 27, right? right? You, and you, you, you'd, you'd take one at him, and he'd flinch, and you'd go to hit him, and he'd go, I wasn't playing. And you'd go, ah, that's bullshit. And you'd hit him twice, two for flinching. He goes, I wasn't playing. That's 10 for contact. Twice. <laughs> now you get 20. I think I know. He wa- listen, no, he, no, wasn't, I, he wasn't bigger than me. Right. He wasn't smarter than me. It wasn't a bully situation. Right. This was, the, as far as I consider, it was my rite of passage. And then I did it to all of you fucks. But I did it, you know, emotionally and, and I mentally. I think I know why I hate this now. It's just because I'm the third of four brothers. Uh, I am not exactly physically strong or able. Uh, I, I I know how to play that thing. I'm 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 wicked good at it. But like, if I punch you, it does nothing. I find I find that suspect. I don't think you're good. at I'm it. I'm good at it. But if I punch you, it does nothing. And if you hit me, I'm out for the count. So like, I'm I'm just yeah. Challenge accepted. We're gonna play the game from now on. <laughs> no, we're playing. No, I'm the not game. doing this. Every time we're together, we're playing God, the game. I wish I would have never brought it up. See, it needs to die. Yeah, well, you did. In a fiery plane. No, crash. it's not going to die. I'm going. I'm going to make sure it continues. Yeah, I'd love to hear you get Brian to agree to to jump in on this one. Oh, Brian will get in on this oh, one. Yeah, we'll see about that. Because I feel like Brian will outsmart you at it and get to punch you. So, oh, Brian's in. I feel like Brian's Bro, in. Yeah, but then he has to remember he has to also play against you. Uh, I, I'm I'm really I probably will let Brian uh, abstain. <laughs> I probably won't make Brian play the game. Just you, I think. Just you. Take your medicine. Onslaught of punches. My stupid mouth. All right. Uh, final story, which was kind of breaking over the last like day or so. So uh, I'm sorry it's not at the top of the show. Uh, and that is uh, Apple apologizing for slowing down your phone when your battery is is slow. I, I, I've got to I got to talk a little bit about this, and 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 I can hear you Android people saying, "At least you're addressing it." Well, prepare to be disappointed. <laughs> you are the world is just overreacting to this like listen 100 percent. I, I i give apple shit for not effectively communicating what they were doing and why they were doing it because here's the thing but everybody does this here's the thing no that's uh, no but l- l- let's get to this the the thing behind it for years and you and i worked in mobile retail like this was the thing you yep. heard uh new operating yep. system and there's a new phone out apple is deliberately slowing down my phone so so i have to buy a new phone and that's not the reason that's not the reason right and that's the thing. But that's the problem. All the crazy uncles, right, that you have right now who believe every conspiracy theory are like, told you Apple was slowing down your phone so you buy not, a new one. So it's not it's not about slowing down your phone. It's about appropriately reallocating your phone's resources to accommodate the new features well, of no, the Here's OS. what was happening. The batteries were at a point where, obviously, it's a, lith- it's a lithium battery, right? So it, it has a life cycle to it. If you have had your phone for three generations, A, that's a fucking problem. Right. So when, you're, when you experience battery loss or, or loss of functionality, you should really only blame yourself. So here's what was actually happening, though, and this is why it, it happened, just to have the context of this. Your phone obviously has a, has a life cycle within the battery. When the battery gets too low, and this is what's happening to a lot of users, so this is why Apple did it, was when you got to 20%, 25%, and you get the, the, the notification low battery. Once you go to do something intensive on the phone, for example, gaming or uh, any kind of like video editing, Snapchatting, even that stuff, right? Uh, Shit you shouldn't be doing at 20%. Right. Your phone goes, I need a ton of battery. Give me now. And it goes, I'm only at 20 and... 
and it would it would it would basically crash, right? Your phone would just turn off and on, off and on. It would it would just it would have problems like this. And it's because right. hey, you need a new battery. Like you're you're doing just a little too much on an old phone that you've obviously not taken care of with your your charging aspects of it. So I, it's be- I, look, I'm not I'm not sure this should like surprise any this shouldn't surprise anybody but, because it's not this isn't confined to just Apple. Every phone Every smartphone, including Android, since the dawn of smartphones, when you get down to that low battery point, everything, everything is more taxing. Everything is more taxing. Right, but there have been specific Android makers that say, we don't do this. We don't throttle your CPU. We don't slow down your phone's performance just because you have a shitty battery. It just means, hey, your phone just dies. I mean, still dies. But like, hey, it's all the same. we don't throttle the phone. And that's where people were getting up in arms. Here's the thing: I just, I just want to again clarify, just so it's, 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 it's explained correctly. They are not doing this so you buy a new phone. They're doing this because your crappy phone can't handle it. And that's a difference. So what they're doing, what they're doing is they're offering twenty eight dollar battery replacements, which is a fifty dollar discount on what they normally do. Now, if you if one of those you who- insist on keeping your three year old piece of shit, right. You can do a twenty. Pay thirty bucks, or here's a fucking idea for everybody. Or, right, just pay the thirty one or forty one, depending on the model of the phone you get, dollars per month to get yourself a new phone. And when you trade in your old piece of shit or you sell it, you'll get somewhere between a hundred and three hundred dollars for that old piece of shit. But for the love of God, if you are a smartphone user. And you are not currently getting a new phone every 12 months. You're doing it wrong. And you're really. Now, the other thing, too, is there's people that just like, you know, I was talking about my niece. They get the hand-me-down phones. $30, not bad to breathe some new 30 life bucks. into a phone. Wonderful. And if, listen. And I have an iPhone 6, CJ. I'm going to go uh, spend 30 bucks yep. and get a new battery. I have a 5S. Because I can. I have a 5S. I'm going to do the same thing. But uh, yeah. I, if, if you're also a little bit of a hands-on nerd, uh, the, the company iFixit has now uh, slashed their battery replacement kits to one of Apple's $30. In most cases, it's the same price, but there are a few for some older phones where it's less. So if you want to fix your own phone's battery, uh, you can do it for the same $30, so you don't have to go to the Apple store. Uh, listen, this happens. This is technology. This, I mean, think about your car, right? Like, you, you don't get mad at Ford because your battery died after having it for, you know, five to six years. Like, batteries wear out, like... Or it takes longer for your car to start up because of an old battery or a failing alternator or whatever. Again, to CJ's point, you're not mad at Ford. Listen, it requires maintenance. If you didn't maintain it, be mad at yourself. You know how you maintain a cell phone? You replace it every 12 months. Like you fucking should. I'm at least. By the way, any of you, and I'm just. No, no, no. Any of you who are currently on a payment plan. With an iPhone, any of you listening that are currently paying monthly on an iPhone, after 12 months when you're 50% paid off, you're eligible to replace that iPhone essentially at the same cost. Sometimes if you want an upgraded model, it costs you an additional five bucks. It's not going to kill you. Go replace your phone. So again... This is great. Stop being dumb. I can hear. Stop being dumb. Hold on, I'm channeling. I'm wait. Go ahead. CJ, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking I to everybody else. Stop being dumb. I am channeling the uh the inner Android fanboy right now. And uh I'm going to summarize what This they applies th- to Android fanboys too. I, I know. It's all I know, the same. I know. I'm just going to summarize what they've heard from us. Are you ready? It's very easy. This is Apple again telling you you're holding it wrong. <laughs> you're holding it wrong. Well, maybe you are holding it wrong. Stop holding it wrong. All right. That's all I have. How about you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. No? <laughs> no not, not for the Larry David reference there? All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are so excited to uh, bring more podcasts to you for the year of 2018. I want to thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work. Brian will be back next week, right? The schedule? We're, ge- we're good? He's coming Ma- back next week? Maybe. If, maybe. Well, if not, we get to punch him in the arm, right? It's one of those. Yeah. Punch because he, because he saw the circle. He saw, all right. He saw the circle. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. So that is our show. Thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work. We will see you all next week and have a wonderful new year. If you love comics and 
sci-fi and technology, television, video games, and fantasy. We'll take a listen to our show, I'm sure you'll see. There's many points where we can agree. Like that Martha as a plot point was just too absurd. And Apple versus Android is a case to be heard. And that Josh Strange new Fantastic Four was a turd. Well, welcome to the club, because you were that kind of nerd. I have the worst power. I turn into a bucket of water. I could be defeated by a sponge. Doesn't even have to be an evil sponge. My mouth feels fuzzy. Why is it so fuzzy? I barely know my name. It's two letters long. I always forget it.